welcome to Hudson Health. Pat O'Meal, you here? I am not a doctor, but I'm sitting in for a doctor. But I do own a television studio so I can play a doctor on TV. Maybe somewhere down the road I will. Today we're going to speak to the president of the Palisades Hospital here in North Bergen, Dr. Anthony Passanante. Doc! Hello, how welcome are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. You know, actually, I wanted you to host the show. And you were like, oh, well, maybe, maybe someday. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe the next show. We just had um, Dr. Rossman from yes, Palisades. I the saw that. He did a great job. He, he came with props. He had the knees and the hips. And I was supposed to have knee surgery done on both my knees. They both need to be replaced from years of sports. And yep. I used to jump out of tractor trailers all the time. And I, nobody ever showed me the, the models before. So I'm looking at the pretty interesting. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I, it wasn't it was not as evasive as I thought it was going to be. How they shaved, shaved down the knee no, and they put the pieces on. So uh, we we were going to do it last year. Then COVID came in, so there were no surgeries being done. So now I'm going to start to revisit that. And uh, Dr. Rossman impressed me so much, I may just go with him on that deal. He's he's excellent. They, they have him do it. You'll be he'll be happy. He had to get it done. Well, I'm going to have to wait as my kids bought a two-family home in Seaside Heights as an investment, Airbnb yes. rental. For that matter, they just rented the apartment this morning, uh, the downstairs. There's no stairs in the downstairs apartment. So if you're going to have knee work done, you want that apartment, because at home in Jersey City, uh, to my apartment, to three family, is like 28 steps. Lots of steps. Yeah, I don't think I want to tackle that many steps. No. With one knee, then go back like six, uh, eight weeks later and have right. the other knee done. So tell me about Palisades Hospital. So uh, Palisade, I joined Palisades Medical Center back in 2015, just prior uh, to the merger with Hackensack University Medical Center. And then just a few months later, uh, the, um, the merger between Hackensack and Meridian occurred. Hackensack uh, Meridian Health has been a, a huge uh, uh, benefit to Palisades and, the, and to the community. Palisades Medical Center is a small community hospital we have uh, about 206 uh, medical beds in the hospital. We have a multitude of services, including uh, general medical, surgical, and maternity services. We do over 1,000 deliveries. And uh, Palisades is really a hospital that's up and coming, has made a lot of improvements since uh, the merger with Hackensack Meridian Health. Uh, we're bringing surgical subspecialties uh, to our uh, campus. Uh, we are upgrading our facility. And, uh, and also we're reaching out into the community and uh, bringing services out to the community as well. Well, we were, I was just talking about Dr. Rossman, orthopedic, and in his show, which he hosted by himself, by the way, he had interviewed your um, uh, therapy center employees. Yes, uh, the, the, um, physical therapy. Physical therapist. And you have a, a new uh, wing, is it, or a new so department? So we, we actually have rehab? an entire new state-of-the-art physical therapy center, which has an incredible view of the Hudson River. Uh, but more importantly, it's about 7,500 square feet, and we perform both adult and pediatric rehab in that facility. The full gamut of modalities, including, including uh, occupational health. Um, that will, was just approved by the state uh, uh, Department of Health uh, last week, and we'll be opening up next week. So we have our soft opening next week, and. Uh, and we're really looking forward to that. It's been a, a long time in, the, in coming, uh, delayed uh, through COVID. But th this will allow us to consolidate three locations and, um, and, and will be a, a state-of-the-art center that will not only support the medical center, it'll support our orthopedic surgical services on the same floor. Uh, and again, uh, with the, the best equipment you can have. And uh, we have a phenomenal department with excellent therapists. So now when you do really the excited. soft open, we got the balloons and the ribbons there. And Mayor we're, Sacco coming with the huge scissors. He's not for the soft opening, but we're going to have a real grand opening. And we will certainly invite the mayor. Uh, he was don't there. do it in the winter. Try no. to have it in the, the warm We're going to have it soon. We're going to get it done soon. Absolutely. And when, what necessitated the... Uh, the new rehab center? Well, we were doing our rehab, as I said, in three separate locations, which really was challenging for our community to get to. Uh, we were, one of the locations was up at Tilton Fitness Center, uh, which is uh, about a mile away, but it's difficult for our community to get there. We have a lot of transportation challenges in our community, of course. Um, and uh, this was a way that we could um, improve the center that we had in the building, which was really undersized. 
uh, consolidate into one location and have a state-of-the-art center. One of the reasons being that orthopedics is one of the services that we're really emphasizing at Palisades Medical Center. And we, we, we wanted to have a convenient location uh, where our patients could do their rehab uh, with a, in, a, in a very comfortable setting uh, and one where they could get high quality rehab done. And close proximity to close the doctor right, and the surgeon. Close proximity to the surgeon, basically down the hall from the surgeon. And what did you do before? You had to run the surgeon over to the, uh, the, the mile away ther therapy center? No, the surgeons would not normally go to the therapy center themselves, uh, which is also a challenge. So it's nice now that our surgeons can stop in uh, when needed or right there. But normally they don't have to be in the center themselves. But it's very convenient for our patients who are leaving the doctor's office to be able to walk over and see the, the therapy center and get an idea of what uh, they're getting into with their therapy. All right, we're going to break the commercial. You're watching Hudson Health. We'll be right back. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage. Let us be your good friend. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down, that's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lyndhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. We're back. Hudson Health. Pat O'Melia here. Head of the hospital. What is your title? Is it president? It's president and chief hospital executive, yes. Dr. Anthony Passanante. And you, you've always practiced in New Jersey? I have, actually. I grew up in Metuchen, New Jersey, and uh, uh, had a cardiology practice in New Brunswick, East Brunswick, and in, in, uh, in, in Manalpin, and uh, practiced there for many years before becoming chief medical officer at St. Peter's uh, University Medical Center. And then uh, in 2015, as I said before, joined uh, the Palisades in anticipation of their merger with Hackensack, and then uh, become part of the network. So I've only been up here uh, s since 2015, but I've been a, a New Jersey native all my life uh, now, after the first 18 months in New York. How do they recruit you from Metuchen to come up to North Bergen? Well, it's interesting, actually. One of my good friends, and, and who was the chief operating officer at uh, St. Peter's at the time, um, became the president down at Jersey Shore Medical Center, and he told me, oh, we're, we're probably going to be joining up with Hackensack Meridian Health, and I hear there's an opening for a chief medical officer up at Palisades. Simultaneously, one of my good friends was one of the lawyers who was involved in that merger, and he called me up and said, Bruce Markowitz is looking for a chief medical officer up here. And it was, a, it was really a goal of mine, uh, although Pal Palisades was a much smaller hospital than St. Peter's, I really wanted to uh, move on to, to work in a network. I thought that there were huge benefits to being in a network. Uh, that was where everything was going, and I knew that we could do uh, great things as part of the Hackensack Meridian Health Network. So that was really the attraction to come up to Palisades, which is, a, is quite a trip from where I live now in, in Princeton, 
but Mr. Markowitz uh, uh, got, got me interested. And uh, you commute back and forth? I don't commute every day. That was one of the other things he did for me was he was able to give me a small place to stay up in uh, Weehawken. So I'm actually uh, staying in Riva Point uh, a couple of nights a week. Nice, yeah. nice city. Weehawken, Richie Turner, very the nice. mayor there. Very nice. He's been the mayor. He'll be the mayor forever <laughs> in Weehawken. They love Richie. He's Turner. been a great supporter of Palisades. I bring that up because I have a studio in Seaside Heights, and the kids have the two-family house in the top floor. We have is for the family to use, so I'll stay down there often. And that ride coming up from Seaside yes. to North Bergen. Now it isn't too bad with COVID traffic. You may have noticed that, by the Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Uh, before was COVID traffic, it would take a couple hours, a couple two and a half hours to get up here. Well, and from Princeton, I would usually leave very early in the morning. I would leave a little before six o'clock, and I could get here in an hour and a half. Um, on the way home, it wasn't sometimes wasn't as good, but yeah, uh, yeah. but obviously staying uh, three miles away in Weehawken was uh, a lot easier. A yeah. lot easier. <laughs> Now, Hack and Tack Williams gives you all the resources you, you can possibly need. Absolutely. Now, during the COVID, how influential was it being part of that system, that network with Hack and Tack Meridian? So, you, were, you, you went from no COVID situation, say, at the beginning of March, to the end of March, we have a pandemic here. How do we handle all this? Absolutely. And, you know, it, it was really, um, we couldn't have done it without the network. Uh, there were uh, incredible resources, communication, uh, command centers set up between the network and all of the hospitals. Uh, we had minute-to-minute -minute ability to get the resources we needed. So we had adequate PPE throughout the pandemic. We had ventilators when we needed it. When we needed to build additional ICUs, we were able to do that. And Palisades went to 100% medical surge uh, COVID at, at the peak of COVID in, in April. Uh, we had over 155 COVID patients in Palisades and uh, over 45 intensive care unit patients. Our normal intensive care unit volume is about six. So um, it was incredible. We got the personnel and the, and the resources that we needed to cope with it. And uh, it, it couldn't have been done without the support of our network. What is the cost to put an ICU bed in? You're, not, you're just not rolling in a cut there. There's a lot that goes involved. I, I can't tell you the exact amount of money, but it's an expensive operation. The monitors are very sophisticated, and the other equipment that's required in an ICU is very expensive and not easy to come by in the middle of a pandemic. Where so. do you get all that ICU personnel? If you went from like six to what was it 45 45 at one point you know so we got you know we had fortunate enough to have uh, some redundancy of personnel in the organization but we also reached out and got personnel from all over the country remember at the time of that pandemic in march april we were really the hardest hit in the country so other parts of the country had people to spare so we were able to get people as far as texas and in the South and Alabama. So we had people, physicians and nurses coming from all over. Uh, we were very fortunate to be able to do that. Well, you were right across. You got that beautiful view in New York City. <laughs> that was really the epicenter where everything was happening it there. Was. And we were like number two right behind New York City. Yes. So I, I, like I said before, I remember talking to Mayor Fulop as the pandemic was starting and we were joking around about canceling the St. Patrick's Day Parade. By the end of March, we were in a full-blown, close everything down, close the malls and all. And Absolutely. it was astonishing on how fast that happened. So it must have been some piece of work to get the hospital from, like you said, the six beds right. and a nice little, uh, you know, normal hospital in town there to all of a sudden you're in a pandemic mode. Absolutely. It was really... Uh a once in a lifetime uh, incident, I hope. I hope it stays that way too. Let's hope so. It's, uh, it was uh, a challenge. Let's break the commercial and we'll talk a little bit more about some COVID, probably a lot of bit more from COVID. You're watching Hudson Health. We'll be right back. Pen and Pencil Properties, Jersey City. Shape in the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. 
Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Stevens Jersey City Ford, located right off of NJ 440 North. Across the Hudson Mall is your one stop for all your automotive needs. Check out Ford's latest models like the 2020 Ford Fusion with its stylish looks and hybrid options, or the unparalleled high performance 2020 Ford Mustang. The 2020 Ford F 150 Raptor is ready for those rugged off road terrains with trail control. Need a mid-sized truck for your towing and hauling? The 2020 Ford Ranger will deliver. The 2020 Ford Escape is a luxury SUV that was made for comfort and adventure on the go. Returning is Ford's legendary Bronco, which takes you back to the true meaning of off-roading. They are now available for pre-order in our showroom or on our website. Let us help you find your next vehicle. Stevens, Jersey City Ford, 201-432-7272. Welcome back, Hudson Health, Pat O'Melia here, president of Palisades University Hospital? Palisades Medical Center. Medical Center, Center. all right. I'll get it right, I got got another segment to go. (laughs) Dr. Anthony Passanati, well, we're talking about how the hospital changed during the pandemic. Take me through that, because you went from treating the uh, patients and you got the ventilators going on, you know, the COVID, we don't have anything for COVID. We had a lot of experimental drugs. I remember President Trump talking about chloroform or whatever that was. Right. So now we have a vaccine. Take me through that. So and, and what was it like going to work every day during that pandemic? So certainly it was a challenge going to work every day uh, when, when we didn't have treatment um, and, uh, and, and when we were seeing coworkers and and, uh, and our community really affected in, in a great way with that. Um, early in, in, in the pandemic, as you said, we had a, a large burden of COVID patients in our hospital coming in through the emergency room. Uh, pretty much all of our patients coming into the hospital were either COVID or suspected COVID at that point. Then as the spring and summer came, those numbers went down dramatically. In the summer, we were in the single digits of COVID. So things really dramatically improved. And of course, in the fall, things began to go up again, never reaching anywhere near uh, the proportions of the, of the spring. We probably had a peak of in the 40s, uh, maybe one day with a low 50 uh, number of uh, COVID patients uh, in the hospital. So never got back to that really terrible situation we had in the spring. Um, and then of course, uh, therapy started coming out. We gave out uh, quite a few of those uh, of the of the monoclonal antibodies in the emergency room for outpatients, um, and, uh, and and of course we learned how to treat those COVID patients much better, the proning and all the other things that worked very well. Understanding that putting what, off what is proning? Proning is actually when you turn a patient onto their stomach. It helps to oxygenate them very well, and you could and prevent the need for. Um, for ventilatory support for intubation and being put on a respirator. Patients with COVID did not do well on respirators, as I'm sure you heard in the news. Well, everybody was looking for them. I so, remember Cuomo. Absolutely. Ventilators, ventilators, more right. ventilators. We probably have a lot of ventilators. We have a lot of ventilators now, right but now. We were very fortunate. Our state was very helpful in getting us the adequate numbers of ventilators that we needed, uh, as well as uh, PPE. And, um, and then we were even, you know, of course, then the, the winter came and uh, I remember our first, uh, the, our first arrival of a vaccine, uh, Pfizer vaccine came in a small box. We, have it, we, we were thrilled to see it come and it was in, in December. And Probably we, had a little ceremony for that box coming. We, we, we had a, we have a, a, lot of, a lot of pictures of that box and a lot of careful hands in our pharmacy department putting it into the freezer. Um, we vaccinated, initially vaccinating our team members, and it wasn't too long after that that uh, I got a call from, uh, from, from the uh, housing authority uh, of West New York that uh, they were having trouble uh, you know, with getting vaccine for their seniors and could we help them. And that was really the first group that we worked with, uh, Bob DeVincent, and uh, he was great. And we started bringing down senior citizens initially the 75 and older age group, and then as the eligible age groups went down, 65 and above, 
and then of course the uh, the people in the in the 16 to 64 age group who were eligible uh, with uh, comorbid conditions. Uh, we we were soon working with the other towns. We we were, had uh, buses coming in to our vaccination center from uh, Weehawken, North Bergen, then soon after that Cliffside Park, Edgewater. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and in fact, uh, West New York was very kind and uh, recognized uh, Palisades not too long ago with a proclamation uh, at, at one of their board meetings. And uh, it was very nice to, for that recognition. But well, more, you, you bailed Mayor Rodriguez out there with his seniors. Go on. We, we, we did help him and we were very happy to do so. I mean, the, the, during COVID, I have to say, our communities were incredibly supportive. We got gifts of food pretty much every day from uh, March, April through June. Uh, and uh, we also got gifts of COVID uh, supplies of all kinds, including PPE. So we were really supported by our community and we were thrilled now to be able to support our community in return. Janet Castro was very helpful. Uh, we got a call not too long ago from the Department of Health saying that Union City uh, was still uh, in need of vaccination and could we go there and help. Uh, my first call, as always, is to Janet, who was phenomenal in trying to help us Great set job. that up. Great job. We're going, and we're going to miss her, but she's moving on to bed. Big, stay in North Bergen. She'll still be she's here. moving we'll, on to bigger Absolutely. But uh, she uh, got that ball rolling, and we soon had vaccinations. Within 48 hours, actually, we had vaccinations set up in Union City. Uh, we then worked with our network to get vaccinations going in uh, North Bergen, and uh, really happy to say that this Saturday, we'll also be vaccinating on the waterfront at the ferry terminal in uh, Weehawken. You really like that view in New York, don't you? Right on the waterfront there, Weehawken? That was... I, I, your uh, Hackensack Meridian Palisades, they uh, gave you my second dose at the uh, recreation center here in North Bergen on 63rd Street. Right. When we come back, we're gonna talk about the, the, the vaccine and the second shot, how important it is to continue on getting these shots. Absolutely. What I call doubling down on the shot. All right, you're watching Hudson Health, Dr. Anthony Passanante, Pat O'Melia. We'll be right back. Burns Brothers, Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers, Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Cutting edge surgical care is right here in Secaucus. Robotic surgery is safer. Shorter hospital stays. Smaller abdominal incisions. The size of an M&M. &M. Here at Hudson Regional, we provide world-class robotic surgical care. Welcome back, Hudson Health, Pat O'Melia, Dr. Anthony Passanante, Palisade Medical Center. Perfect. Am I getting it right? I Absolutely. Like four segments to do that. <laughs> Before we get into the how important it is to get that second shot. When they were talking about the vaccine coming, we were hearing rumors and they were doing testing. Did you think we would get a vaccine as quick as we have? Well, certainly at the beginning of the pandemic, we never envisioned getting a vaccine in such a short period of time. Now, how long have you been practicing medicine? I've been practicing medicine since 1986. And uh, certainly, you know, everything that we learned uh, in school and afterwards was that it would take usually two to three years to get a good vaccine. At least. At least. And uh, this was remarkable, I mean, incredible effort. Um, not only is it an incredible effort, but it almost was unheard of to have a vaccine that's this effective. It's uh, actually, I was speaking to one of our infectious disease experts today saying how we never have seen vaccines that are uh, above 90% effectiveness. This is really out, you know, outstanding. Well, the Pfizer and the Moderna is 95%, isn't it? Correct. It's the J&J &J that's in the high 70s, 80s. J&J is a little less, but, but extremely effective for preventing serious disease. So, you know, and that's really what we want from a vaccine. Well, I was gonna get the J&J. &J. 
one shock. But unfortunately, the day I'm getting in, there was some question with the J and J. Right. So Janice said, "We're coming with the Pfizer." That means you got to do this twice. And, and, and that was really an overstated issue. I mean, that was th those. You know, there were very few uh, numbers of people who who did get a serious condition. But really, it was about the same level as you would see in the normal population. So, Minuscule. The yes, uh, I certainly now, would be happy even, to get any of them. Even the side effects were minimal. Now, some of my own personnel here who got the uh, shots uh, had issues. The oldest guy got two shots, not even a pain in the arm or anything, no issue at all. Uh, my, uh, my younger personnel had issues. And if you're, if you're thinking about getting a shot, get the second shot. Yeah, it's very doubtful you'll even have side effects. How important, Doc, is it to get that second shot? Oh, it's, it's incredibly important. You know, what we, we know that there is a significant effectiveness to the first shot, um, but what we don't know is how long that will last. So that second shot ensures not only that you're going to get above that 90% effectiveness, but we know that it's going to last for much longer. For so, that matter, I think I read today that Moderna is thinking about adding a booster into the flu shot. Uh, yes, they're looking at the Moderna executive. I, I saw him on actually in uh, uh, another th TV show where he spoke. There another one? There, can you believe it? There's another one behind that wall. <laughs> where he spoke about the fact that they're making an mRNA, same technology, flu shot, which unlike our normal flu shot, which is at best 40, 50, 60 percent effective, which he believes will also be 90 percent effective. Realize we had no flu at all this year. Amazing. Shows what masks will do, right? <laughs> well, now we know how to handle the flu. Now, I'm, I don't think there's really an issue with side effects from getting the second shot. Uh, Percentage-wise, I, I think the percentages that I've been reading on 65 and up, 86 percent of the population in New Jersey has been vaccinated. Then it starts to go down from 30 right. to 50. It's in like the 50% range and from 16 to 29, I think it's at 44%. Now, I don't know how many of those people are going back to get that second shot and it's imperative that we do that. It is very important and I would encourage anybody who, out there who's gotten that first shot to, to get that second shot done. It's really important. Uh, you wanna maintain that, uh, that immunity for as long as possible. We don't know yet if you'll need another shot in the fall. It's likely you may need a shot again, uh, like we do with the flu, uh, but we don't know. At this point, we know that the effectiveness out six months is still highly effective, so we're very happy to see that. And, uh, and again, we're also very happy to see that that younger age group now uh, is, is able to get 12 and over. Uh, so we're you know, really encouraging people, uh, especially as children go back to camps and well, of course, in the, in the fall, going back to school. Uh, very important because, uh, you know, although vaccines are 90% effective, they're not 100% effective. And so it's important to protect all of our vulnerable population. And one of the best ways to do that is to reduce the, the burden of disease in the community. And Now, you mentioned you're going to be in Weehawken. Are there going to be um, vaccination centers open up like for the, for the next month? with the Palisade Medical Center? Well, we are talking to other communities as well, um, Edgewater, and we're, we're actually willing to you know, go wherever we can. We're only limited by personnel, by how many people we can get, and we're using our own personnel for this. But um, we've been, you know, we have had cooperation with the communities, and uh, we are looking at other uh, uh, communities as well. Well, um, if you can give me the list of where absolutely. the vaccination centers are, and I'll, I'll reach out for Janet Castro also, They'll be appearing below you, below you, right on the TV. Oh, that would be great because so we, we are, we are, we are, we are, you know, we're not seeing the large numbers that we saw in the past, and we really would like to see bigger numbers. It's really important to get people vaccinated. Well, that's what surprised me. You've seen these huge lines for the first shot. Yes. And I went to 63rd Street. There was no line at all. No, the lines no, have certainly diminished. I think the, it seems like a lot of the people who got the vaccine are have gotten it already, and. We're seeing the, those, that, 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 the 30 or, that 30 or 35 percent who haven't been vaccinated are not coming out yet, and at least not fast. So, so we got about 15 seconds left. Are you satisfied that we we removed the uh, the mask mandate outdoors? Oh, I'm very happy to see yeah, the I mask mandate off. outside yeah. is is very uh, safe. I'm yeah, very I, comfortable I with that with myself. You. I'll still wear it indoors at ShopRite Home Depot, but as soon as Murphy said you could take it off, I was like, Pink, absolutely. Gone. All absolutely. right, we're at a show. Dr. Anthony Passanante, president of Palisades Medical Center in North Bergen, New Jersey. Pat O'Neill, you're here. You'll be good. You'll be safe. Double down on that shot. Go get that second shot. Good night.